Uh, Whiskey 6 Lima Golf. Uh, Whiskey 6 uh, Lima, is it Lima Golf, is that correct? Crap, and I want to be understood. I'm a communicator, not a broadcaster. Hi, I'm Jim W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain. In continuing in my series of setting up a basic ham radio station, I thought it would be interesting to test an antenna tuner and see what kind of losses there are. Uh, does it do a good job? Is it worth having one? Not a big fan of antenna tuners. <clears throat> also, again, I want to look at how much loss there is in 100 feet of RG8X on 20 meters. And to do that, and to do these tests, I'm going to use my Heath dummy load light bulb because it's a good, uh, good way to demonstrate whether or not RF is getting to the antenna. So this is going to be our antenna. I've got two identical bird watt meters. Uh, they're bird 43. Um, the design goes back to the 1950s, hasn't changed, they're still producing this and um, on eBay the basic unit sells for about $200 and the slugs 50 to 150 depending on what the slug is. Slugs are 250 watts and so about mid scale is 100 watts. To read uh, forward power you Put the arrow towards the antenna to read reflected power. As I said, it's a real basic design. Turn the arrow around and go the other direction. Now you can be fooled by a bird watt meter. They're the still a standard of the industry, but there's a catch, and we'll talk about that when we get there. All right, this is going to be kind of fun. I'm going to walk around the other side of the table. I'll be out of focus because I'm focused here, so these meters will show up. But who cares about me? Um, so let's see. Um, what happens when we put uh, 100 watts through uh, through these watt meters and see that they read the same? And um, you can see that when you put 100 watts into that light bulb, it lights up pretty good. So this is what we're looking for. We want as much energy to get to the antenna as we can. So I'm going to stop the recorder and configure this so uh, I'm transmitting into this one uh, into that bird through the antenna tuner, through this other bird, and then to uh, to my dummy load. So, back in a minute. Okay, I've got things connected. So we've got um, transceiver connected to the first bird, through the antenna tuner, which is off, to the second bird, and then to my fancy antenna. So let's see what it looks like. Alright, we've got about 100 watts, and about 100 watts, and that says 100 watts, roughly. So we've got 100 watts uh, in the system. There's not much in the way of cabling lengths at this point. So let's see what happens when we hook up the antenna tuner, how, or turn it on, rather. How much loss is there? So we're going to turn that on. And have it tuned. Okay, uh, this is showing about 93 watts. That's showing about 80 watts. Let's see if we can if we can fine tune this manually. There we go. It's getting brighter, and I think I'm pretty close. Yep. Okay, that's showing 100 watts. That's showing right shy of 100 watts a little bit. That's showing 100 watts output, and the SWR is um, roughly 1.1 to 1. So how much loss is there in the antenna tuner? Well, the answer is really nothing. Maybe a watt or two, but nothing you can easily measure. So that's really pretty good. Um, had to tune it manually because it wasn't matching, but the bulb probably is a bit crazy. So in terms of impedances, it's probably a bit awkward. Let's do one other test, and that is how much loss is there with 100 feet of coax. So I'm going to put 100 feet of coax between the, um, uh, put it right after this. So this will be tuning through the coax, through the bird watt meter, to the antenna. And let's see how much loss is incurred by that coax. So I'm going to stop the machine and um, connect stuff. So let's see how much loss there is in the, uh, the coax. Oh. 
We've got uh, roughly 100 watts here. It's not as bright as it was. And let's see what we got in the way of forward power. Uh, about 75 watts. And we have about 10 watts reflected round numbers. So we've got 75 forward, 10 reflected, a net of about 65 watts going to to the um, uh, dump, to what we're calling the antenna, but it's uh, it's my dummy load. So what does that mean? That means that we're losing about 35 watts in the coax, or about a third of our power, which is significant. Now let's see what happens when we put in a uh, a match that's not exactly 50 ohms, uh, and what what happens to the uh, feed line losses. Is it going to be more or is it going to be less? My guess is it's going to be more, but I don't know. Okay, so I'll probably manually tune the uh, antenna tuner. Uh, let's see if I can get a little bit better match. There we go. Okay, so we've got. Um, That's about as good as I can do. So we've got, um, this is throttling back because it's seeing still a bit of SWR. This is showing about 80 watts that direction. About 10 watts reflected. So I'm getting about 70, 75 watts out here. And this is showing about 70 watts. That's 65 watts forward about 20 watts reflected so we've got about 45 watts so 75 watts here 45 watts here that's again about one-third loss so the loss appears to be about the same um, but the losses are pretty are really pretty significant in the uh, in the coax okay so we found that the coax has uh, anyway a, a couple of db loss the antenna tuner virtually has no loss. What happens when you have a bunch of coax connectors? Now here's 20 coax connectors. The rule of thumb that I always heard was that you lose about half a dB per connector. So if there's 20 connectors here and it's half a dB, that would be 10 dB, which means in round numbers if you're putting 100 watts into this end, you've got 10 watts coming out the other end. Let's see what happens. So to do that, I'm going to um, put this thing in the line so it's going to connect to this bird and to this bird, and then we'll we'll see what happens. So I'm going to stop the camera. It's going to take a few minutes to hook this up, and we'll see. Okay, I've connected um, roughly 20 coax connectors. So I'm going from the transceiver through the uh, bird watt meter, through a jumper cable to the beginning of this, and then from this end into this bird, from there into uh, my dummy load. So let's see how bright the bulb is. And again, the theory is half a dB loss. There's 20 connectors here, so half a dB per connector would be 10 dB loss equates to about 90% um, loss in the coax connectors and guess what uh, this bird is showing 105, 106 watts that one's showing same amount now why is it showing more because when you use this kind of watt meter as we've talked about you have to look at the forward power and the reflected power Reflected power is about 6 watts. So you take the forward, it's 106, take the reflected about 6, net the two, gives you 100 watts. Transceiver is indicating about 95 watts out. So the theory that you lose half a dB per, connect, per connector is not true. Well, that was interesting for me too because I learned something that um, I didn't know before. 
I thought antenna tuners had lots of loss. As it turned out, not so much, especially on 20 meters. Uh, so we learned loss in antenna tuners is not as great as I th as I thought it would be, and maybe only adds up to uh, four or five watts of heating inside the box, which isn't much. Coax connectors, you can use as many coax connectors as you need in your shack, and it's really not going to matter. Um, do they present a 50 ohm impedance? Uh, likely not, but in the scheme of things, they're so short that it probably doesn't matter. For example, this was, um, I don't know, let's say two feet long. <clears throat> 20 meters is roughly 60, let's say 63 feet. So we're out of the 63 feet for a full wavelength, we've got two feet that's, God knows what, what impedes that would be. It might be 50 ohms, it might be 100 ohms. And so you've got this disturbance in the line, but it's a, sh a short piece of the wavelength. So I think, and I'm not an engineer, but I think that's the reason why it doesn't matter all that much. It's just not um, a significant length. If it had been 33 feet or a quarter wavelength, 16 feet or something like that, then yeah, I think it would make a difference. But if you need to use coax connectors, and I used right angle and connectors, all kinds of things, didn't seem to matter much. Coax, there's where you need to spend money. Um, if you're losing a third of your power in your coax, it's not a good thing. And that's the case on 20 meters with 100 feet of RG8X. Better to invest in a good coax. And by that, uh, RG213, uh, if you have a really long run, LMR400. <clears throat> if you have an extremely long run, uh, as I do, where it's a couple hundred feet, Hardline is a good choice. Uh, and LM, um, RG8X is probably not a good choice. It's relatively inexpensive. This is excellent coax. It's from a great supplier in the United States. It's not junk. Their coax connectors are, I've yet to have one fail. Uh, the stuff will handle a kilowatt. But uh, you're going to lose about a third of your power on 20 meters. And when you get to 10 meters, it's going to be a lot larger. And my guess is probably half your power. And you don't want to give up 3 dB in your coax. You don't want to give up 2 dB. Where's the threshold? For me, it's about 1 dB. Anything greater than that, uh, I'm not happy. The point of all of this is that ERP is the thing that we're looking for in a station. So even in a basic station, you want to avoid losses as much as you can. Coax connectors don't matter much. Um, antenna tuners don't matter much. Coax cable matters a great deal. Uh, ERP, effective radiated power. So if you're competing in a pilot for a DX station and you've got a 3 dB loss in your coax and you're putting out 100 watts to a dipole, now you've got an ERP of 50 watts, the guy you're competing against may have a lot healthier ERP. Um, for example, in my station I've got two monoband Yagis, uh, four elements each, so I've got eight elements. Uh, gain of the antennas is less than 10 dB, but let's just round it off at 10 dB. I've got a uh, hard line to both towers with a uh, brand new phasing box to one of them. And if I'm putting, uh, in considering coax losses, 1400 watts to the antennas, and I've got 10 dB gain, I have an ERP of 14,000 watts. And if I'm competing in a pileup against a guy who's got an ERP of 50 watts, he may be hurt, he may work the DX station before I do, but I got a much better shot at it because I'm going to be stronger. Sometimes the DX stations are really good about listening for the weaker signal. But what you want to do is have the greatest ERP that you can have. So avoiding a lot of coax losses is a good thing. Having to use bulkheads through walls and add coax connectors, it really doesn't matter much. Coax, it matters a lot. So I would rather spend my money on really good coax uh, first before I invest in um, a better antenna. It, it's a shame to lose a third of your power or half of your power in coax before it even gets to the antenna. And when we talk about antennas, really we're talking about a system. We're talking about the uh, all the stuff that makes up the circuit getting out to the antenna. And again, what we want is the greatest ERP. Hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly did. I learned a lot. Antenna tuners that I basically don't like much because a lot of times they fool guys into thinking they've got an antenna that's working when it really doesn't work all that well. But as it turned out, 
The tenon tuners really don't have much loss, and in, in, in this case, it, it provided a service. Um, back to the coax, huge losses, something to think about. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please do subscribe. I'm trying to build the number of subscribers. Um, it's important to me to try to get to a number this year that's, uh, we're, I think we're at 3,000, which is great. And uh, if you have a question or a comment, please post it below. If you care to comment on a guy's question, please do that. Uh, it's uh, get some great answers. Sometimes they're, they're private emails to me, and I really would like to share them with everybody, and especially if you're an engineer, an RF engineer, and you've got uh, some input as to one of the things we discussed today, or perhaps a, a correction of something I've done. Uh, please post that. I'd love to hear from you. In any case, 73, thanks a lot. I've, I've enjoyed it, and uh, see you the next time. And we're going to have some fun with the next one, too. W6LG. Bye-bye.